So number one, find a linear combination of these three vectors and there's four selections for you to choose from. Now, sometimes you might be lucky and one of the components might be different than them all, in which case you could just concentrate on that particular one, whether it's X, Y or Z. But they seem to be going in pairs here. You're probably as well just doing the whole thing just to check the arithmetic anyway. So, what have we got for this thing? So it means you've got two lots of P, so that's two lots of 5, 2, 5, negative 7. Take away Q, that's 1, 0, negative 1. And take away a half of R, which is negative 4, 2, 0. That just means you've got three rows of calculations to do independently of each other. So it's double the first, take away the second, take away half of the third. So it's double 2 is 4. Take away 1 is 3. And then that will be add 2 to make 5. That doesn't eliminate any yet. Double the 5 is 10. It's still 10. Take away 1 is 9. And that well may be enough on its own now. There's only one that starts 5, 9. So you know the answer is C. You may as well finish it off just to check in case you made a mistake in your calculation somewhere. You've got 2 times negative 7. That's negative 14. Plus 1 is negative 13. Take away nothing. It's still negative 13. Now it's definitely C. So there it is. Answer C. Number two, a line has got this equation. What's the gradient of any line that's parallel to it? Well, it'll be parallel to it if it's got the same gradient, but you can't get the gradient straight away from that. You need to get it in the form of y equals mx plus c. So rearrange it to y equals. So it'd be 3y would be negative 2x plus the 6, and then divide by the 3, so it's negative 2 thirds plus 2, which doesn't matter, which means you've got the gradient is negative 2 thirds. And any line parallel will have the same gradient, so you're looking for negative two thirds, which is B. Number three, transformation of a function. What's the graph of the transformed function in this case? Well, there's two ways you could look at it. You could look at it purely in terms of the picture, as in what happens to this? You would recognise that as outside of this, the answer is it just says minus one. So all that happens is the graph's dropping down one. Nothing else is happening. It's not getting expanded. It's not being turned upside down. And then what's happening inside? What's happening across the way? Remember, it's the opposite of this. It's not going forward to, it's going back to. So it's going to end up looking something like this. And that alone is sufficient to pick out the answer because since there's no negative multiplying number, it's going to be the same way around, minimum then maximum. That only happens with C and D. And it's going backwards rather than forwards, so it has to be D. Or you could do it this way, you could do it purely algebraically, just by saying, well, what happens to these points? What happens to the point 1, 2 under that transformation? Well, this says the x coordinate is going to go back 2, so it's 1 take away 2. The answer, the y coordinate, will be the original one, take away one. So it'll be two, take away one. So that's going to go to the point negative one, one. Negative one, one. That's the only graph that goes through negative one, one. That would give that in its own. But you could double check it with the next point. Negative two, negative three. What happens to the point negative two, negative three under this transformation? Well, what happens to the x-coordinate? It's going to go back two, so it's negative two, take away two. What happens to the answer? It's going to drop down one. So that's going to go to negative 4, negative 4. Again, D. D's got these two points in it, so D's the answer. You could have done it that way formally, or you could just have thought, what does the picture look like graphically, what happens to it? So with number 4, a tangent to the curve with this equation is drawn at this point on this curve. What's the gradient of that tangent? We don't need a picture of it. It's just as simply a case of, here's the coordinate formula, get the gradient formula and put the x-coordinate into it. Also differentiate it, dy by dx, because the gradient will be given by that. That's simply multiply by the power, take one off the power, linear terms, so that's just minus 2. And what happens when x is 2? So if x is 2, that means the gradient's going to be 3 times 2 squared, take away 2. That's 3 times 4 is 12, take away 2 is 10. And then we'll just check to see which one that is, and that was D. So number four is the answer, D.